I'm Pamela Portnoy. I'm Alexa Marie Anderson. And no one's okay. <laughs> And we're back. Hello. <laughs> Hi, guys. We're so excited today because we have a very, very special guest. Tina Kashani is here. She is an actress, model, singer, dancer, originally from New York. She is known for various film and television roles, including uh, playing Tyranny on CW's Pandora and Riza or Riza? Shoot. Uh, Riza. Riza on The Young and the Restless. <laughs> Which, if I'm not mistaken, you're going to be uh, coming back on that show soon, right? Yeah, well, Pandora's first. Um, Pandora, we're starting season two, supposedly pending COVID uh, in a few weeks. So, That's so exciting. It's supposed to premiere in October season two. That's fantastic. Such, yeah, that's such good news. I love to hear that. Thank you. So excited. So thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. I'm excited. I would say, you know, this is my first time. So hopefully I um I don't have too many stutters. <laughs> You're already doing it fantastically. <laughs> don't worry at all. You're great. Thank you. Beautiful. So we just wanted to talk about actor mindset with you because I know uh you're pretty into keeping your headspace in a particular place when it comes to your acting roles. And not only that, but your life too, and, and your writing and your singing. So we kind of just wanted to talk to you about that. But first, why don't you tell our audience what got you into acting? Well, acting was something that I didn't, I didn't want until after high school. I didn't start early. Um, I started dancing first. So my, um, my mind was set on being a ballerina. I was sure of that until I had to get surgery on my toes from point shoes uh, when I was 15. And then that's also when modeling started. So that kind of dropped off. I let go of the, the, the dancer in me, although I've never really let go of the dancer. But, um, and then I went to a performing arts high school for dance the last two years. And then senior year, um, I switched and I majored in drama and minored in dance. And that was the first time I got exposed to drama, drama before I'd done musical theater. But it was the first time I kind of got exposed to a more raw sense of acting. And I really liked that part of it. Um, but I didn't start until I kind of let my modeling career go and took advantage of all that. Um, and so I kind of waited until I felt I had done everything there and taken advantage of all the opportunities and then moved out to LA and really pursued it. Wow. That's awesome. When did you, when did you move? I, well, oh, I think it's about seven years now, seven years, like full time. Because when I first moved out, um, it was still mainly, I was mainly just modeling and I was going back and forth. I still have a place in New York um, where I'm from, where my family is. So I was planning on being bi-coastal, but it's kind of tough. You know, all the auditions were here and it just wasn't what I thought it was going to be. So I ended up, um, I just rent out my place now and I full time, I would say seven, seven years. Nice. Cool. Cool. Did you feel, because I'm an East Coast gal as well. I'm uh, from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. East Coast. Right. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so did you feel like a culture shock when you moved or did you, like, what was your take on I did. East to West? I did. I, I, well, at the time that I moved here, I'd been in New York for like two years straight before then I was oh wow sorry um <laughs> before then I was traveling a lot I I lived in Sydney for two years and then I lived in in Europe with modeling I lived in Milan and um, Germany and so like I just took advantage of that whole situation and I, I did that for a long time and when I finally moved back to New York and had kind of a New York life it's it's funny I grew up there but I didn't feel like I had a New York life until I, I came back from all that. Because I grew up, I had my childhood, but then 
kind of having like an adult life there. Right. I feel um, like having an adult life in New York is very different from probably growing up there, if I'm not mistaken. I know, I know I have a couple, I know a couple friends that have grown up there and then now living there as artists and yeah. it's, it's definitely different. It is. It, it was, I mean, I, I love New York. I'm, I'm a New Yorker at heart. I will always be an East coast girl. Um, so yeah, my heart is still there, but it's, especially for me that I still haven't lost my New York. And I mean, Pam knows me a little bit. Like <laughs> uh, I can be really blunt and really honest and um, people don't really like that here. So I love it. I, I know you do. That's why I love you. Yes. Pam, you are a rare West coast woman because I often it's get true. myself into trouble. It's true. And yeah, that's exactly, I would get myself into trouble and I didn't even realize what I was doing because we don't even know. That's just how we are. And, exactly. it, you know, yeah. saying something that to us is like nothing or it's a joke and people are like, oh my God, did mm-hmm. she just say that? I'm like, They're like, oh, I thought, I, I thought you were mad at me. I'm like, no, I just, no. Yeah. <laughs> I was having a I'm conversation. Just not over the top, you know, that's yeah. not in us to do. It's right. like, you know, again, I'll, I'll do that if I'm getting paid, if I'm acting, but I'm not going to do that in my normal life. If I just meet someone, you know, I am what I am. kind of. Exactly. I love that. I love that. Yeah. But, so when we talk about actor mindset, what's the first thing that you sort of think about when it comes to that? Um, is it staying positive when it, there's nothing going on? Is it creating work for yourself is it how do you how do you handle you know the trajectory trying to create a trajectory for for your career like what is what is mindset to you yeah it's it's kind of taken me a while to get there because um in the beginning I I didn't know what I was doing I really didn't I I just kind of knew that I liked it and I knew that I had an innate talent to read lines. So I was just kind of going off that. And, you know, I'll be honest about that. I was. So it wasn't until probably, in all honesty, about four years ago that my my mind shifted just within myself that I realized I kind of had to make this my life because I, I love it that much and I have such a passion for it. But my approach wasn't consistent up to that point. And I found it really difficult to do because I wasn't used to that my whole life. I mean, with modeling, you don't really have to keep anything going. It is what it is. You you go to a casting, you book it or you don't. And, you know, and you're, it's more opportunities and you're more busy than you are with acting. So I wasn't used to it. I wasn't used to having time off or, you know, going a month without an audition. I you know, I was starting to freak out and my, my headspace was not good at that time. So it took a while to realize or to find where I'm comfortable, where I'm comfortable um, as, as an artist to accept that this is what we go through. And the only way that I found to kind of always be immersed in it somehow um, was doing, I, I do do the work on my own, even if I'm not busy, I'm kind of always reading something or, uh, you know, I have all my old sides almost, you know, like uh, five boxes of them. And I just- You're not someone cool. that throws them away after auditions? If they're good ones, no. Okay. I, I keep mine too. I have boxes under my bed, so you're not alone. If, if I like them, I'll keep them because I do yeah. like bringing them back. And then, you know, cause I've, cause I have grown throughout the years and then I, I'll look at it again and I'll see the notes that I put on it and I'll be like, Oh no, no, that was, wrong. you know, like just to, just to see where <laughs> it's fun it's to work on them again and see how much you've grown from that. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it, it's it's not a it's not an easy thing. It's not an easy thing for for any of us, I guess, because um, we just want to be working all the time and we just want to be in it all the time. And um, writing definitely helped me with that. When I started writing, it just kind of helped um, be creative 
on on a regular basis because because that was the tough thing it was kind of easy for me to get distracted or emotionally my emotions would just go up and down um just being upset if we didn't book something or i didn't get that audition you know that's the career we chose <laughs> it is and so you find that it channels your creativity into something else that, and it kind of takes your mind off of um, putting all your eggs in one basket. Yeah. Well, the reason, I think the reason I decided to write, and I, I do feel like it, it was something that was meant to happen at some point, but I think going through a dry period of not booking work and not, getting um the auditions i was used to getting pushed me to be like okay no i'm not doing it. like i'm i'm not going to sit around and have this be my life you know this is we have one life and yes i chose this career but i'm not going to let other people dictate when i'm allowed to perform or not so i had a, a specific idea that had been in my head for a long time and um i when I first came out to LA, I had a theatrical manager who was a lit manager as well. And he always pushed me to write. I don't know why, but he always said, you know, you should write, you know, actors should always be creative and create their own content. And I wasn't in the right place until about, you know, two and a half years ago. And that's when I decided I'm, I'm just going to do this. I'm just going to do it. I, I'm, I don't want to let people dictate um, my, my happiness or, or whether or not I can do what I love to do. So, yeah. I think that's really smart. Yeah. It's, it was tough because I still don't consider myself a writer. And when I wrote the first draft of my script, I actually went back to Sydney. I went to Australia because I wanted to just be away from everything. I wanted to be by myself. I didn't want any kind of distractions, you know, there, I, I, I don't, I lived there a long time ago, so I don't know anybody there now. So I didn't know anyone and there was nothing I could do. I had to write. And I, I just, I love being there. It's such a great energy. So, um, so yeah, I picked Sydney and I just, I just went, I just flew there. I got an Airbnb for a month and, um, and knocked out the first draft of the script. But when I got back, it was tough. It was tough having distractions and being able to sit and write. It was really tough. Was it because you kind of had to just shift out of the zone that you were already put yourself into? Yeah, it, it was kind of, um, I knew how much work goes into a script and, you know, that 10, 15, I don't know how many drafts can be put, you know, into a script before it's finally made. But I guess I, I, I think I knew, but I didn't really anticipate it. So yeah, I was under the impression of like, okay, I knocked out this first draft, we're ready. <laughs> and I got back and you know, I gave it to my manager and showed it to a couple people. And they're like, yeah, it's not there yet. And I'm like, what, I gotta do this again? Like I was thinking, I'm good, I'm like golden, done. The script's, you know, I'm gonna sell it right now. Nah, it doesn't work like that. So um, it took a while for me to develop patience, basically, in general, just in life. So I had to, I had to buckle down and just make myself sit and write. But I had to, yeah. I had to take myself to a different mind space to be able to do it. I love that you just went for it, though. I feel like a lot of writers sit on their work for a really long time. I love that you just you were like, "This is it. Here it is. Read it." You know, because I feel like I feel like this you kind of have to push yourself to do that, to get the feedback and be able to, you know, revise it. A lot of people will write something and then they'll be afraid to like show it to anyone. So I love, I, I love, you're kind of fearless in that way. It definitely, it, it made me very nervous, especially to, to send it to my manager at that time, because he was the one that pushed me so much and I really wanted to impress him. And again, I, I, you know, some people believe everything happens for a reason. I've gone back and forth with that. But I do think that the time that I went through of having that dry spell and acting, I don't know if I went through that, if I would have written this. And mm -hmm. 
I don't know if I would have had that motivation. So it really wasn't until it, it got to a point of I'm 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 not gonna let this take over my my mental health because at that point it just was super stressful and I just decided that the only way for me to be able to create my own content and and work in the capacity that I wanted to work was to create these characters myself. So in a way, I guess, it, you know, everything does happen for a reason. And, um, I'm, you know, it's been a lot of work, but I'm super glad that I wrote it and it's gotten a lot of good feedback that I didn't really expect in all honesty. I wasn't sure what the hell I was doing, <laughs> but, um, how many, how many drafts deep are you now? I'm, this is probably, I think this one is like my sixth or seventh, I think. So you yeah. really did figure it out because not only did you have to do it again, you did it again and again and again. Yeah. Yeah. This, I mean, the story changed from the first time that I wrote it. Um, the first time that I wrote it when I was in Sydney, I kind of just threw everything out. I, you know, I had this picture in my head and I just threw that on paper. And then as I kept, you know, sending it out and getting different feedbacks, you know, some of the drafts were minor changes here and there, but all in all, I would say it's, it's had about, you know, seven, seven passes. And um, yeah, I just spoke to, to someone this morning again about um, new notes. So, so it'll keep going, I guess. <laughs> I'm excited for you. Oh, thank you. Yeah. I'm excited. Are too. you planning on uh, bringing this piece to life anytime soon? Is there anything you're willing to share about it? Um, it's, it's about a female serial killer. Um, heck yeah. That's yes. bad. I mean, I mean, not, not like heck yeah, serial killing, but like, heck yeah. Oh yeah. Serial killers. Yeah. <laughs> I, I like seeing Tina. I'm, I'm assuming you're going to play the role. Is that the end goal? Right. You're really good at playing badass women. Yeah, I play the villain a lot. <laughs> I really don't know what that says, but a lot. <laughs> it, it's, it's just everyone has different strengths. I mean, I've seen you be a villain in Rocket, and I've seen you play really sweet people in Rocket, and you're a sweet person in real life. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you see that through the New York. See, that's why I love you. I could see it. <laughs> so she's a serial killer. Do yeah. you know when you want to be wheels up on it? Well, I, I planned during quarantine planned to really get into it and really break it all down and really have it ready by the end of, uh, of, quarantine and um honestly I just couldn't get there with everything that was going on I mean we were locked in the house but I just could not mentally get there like I I just couldn't focus on it at all so I'm just now starting to uh, you know have my anxieties eased a little bit from you know what's been going on in the world and gotten back into it so um I just spoke with a producer this morning about locking it in and um and working with him on it so that's exciting oh really well, hoping by the end of the year fingers crossed yes actually fingers crossed. it will it will can we talk about that because i know that that is so your thing you're like this is what is going to happen not what i want to happen <laughs> this is what's going to happen you got to do it you got to do it i i for a very long time and again this is i think a little bit of an an east coast thing we can tend to be kind of negative um or always yeah go to the negative very quickly and there was just a point that i came to that I was like, this is not serving me in any sense. I'm not benefiting from this mindset. And 
then when I really started to like look into psychology and why, why I have these thoughts or why I always go that way and other people don't. And then I started to understand it. It wasn't until I could understand it in like a scientific sense, because I'm one of those people I, I need facts before I can actually really believe it or implement it. It wasn't until I spent time really understanding all that, that I realized that you don't have to be that way, that just because you grew up that way or just because that that is how I've been the majority of my life doesn't mean I have to continue like that. And I wanted to believe so much in in the law of attraction and in manifesting, but I'd, I'd, I'd gone through my periods of trying it and it didn't work the way I wanted it to. So I was very quickly like, nah, this is, this is bullshit. Like <laughs> this is not real. People are making it up, but it really is a whole process. It really, I, it just came step by step. It just came through life, different points in my life where I realized this thing. And then I realized that thing. And then I just realized that you really can create whatever circumstance you want. And it's really hard for people to agree with that or take that in because it requires you. And I think it's easiest, easier for us actors to do it because we're used to doing this for work. We're used to doing it on a regular basis is creating a circumstance that we can't see, um, you know, creating a fourth wall that isn't there. Yeah. And it sounds crazy to some people, but you literally have to live like that. You literally have to choose what you want to see. And it's, it's, it's hard to kind of explain. And like I said, I, I get some weird looks sometimes, but it, it's, it's worked for me. It's, it's changed things for me. And I have seen things manifest that I was like, did that just happen? Did I just make that? Wow. That's, pretty insane so then you just keep doing it so you said that you started dabbling with it but it wasn't really working for you what was the shift that you made that allowed it to really start working for you the shift was and again it's they always seem to come at a point where you feel really low and you're just like I I don't want to be like this anymore and because I've, I've suffered from anxiety in my life, so it, it's really quick for me to um, go to the other side of it and just, you know, every, everything's bad and, and nothing's going to change. And it, it was at a point where things were bad and it was probably around that same time, that same kind of dry spell that I went through, that I didn't care. I, I, I didn't, and, and that's the whole thing that they kind of say that you have to let it go. And you have to not care about the manifestation, which a lot of people don't understand. They're like, why, why am I doing it if I don't care? But there is actually a place that you can get to where you, you visualize so much, you immerse yourself in that reality so much that you literally feel it in your body and you really don't care if it shows up or not because you are actually living it in that moment. So it wasn't until I got to the point where I was like, I don't care if I see it actually. I, I don't care. I just, I just want to feel good. That's it. It was just bottom line. I just want to feel good and I want to be happy because, you know, as morbid as it is, we don't know when it's our last day. And it's, it's really not worth it to live a life that you're not happy with or that you, you can't change. I think that was the biggest thing. It was just, I was... I, I was um, a bit of a brat about, you know, not being able to change things myself and not understanding. And so, <laughs> what, what? I can't do anything about this. This makes no sense. And I can't do anything. And so that was my yeah. New York. Through that, I can do something. I'm a do something. I love, yeah, we're doers. We're like, I can fix this. I can yeah. do that. Yeah, totally understand that. Do you feel like a lot of the man manifestation is like removing your ego from the situation? Do you feel like yeah. that helps? Yes and no, because I, um, like, it's been a pretty long road and I've had to try a bunch of different things um, to find mm -hmm. what works 
it's kind of the same thing with in, in my acting, you know, when I first started out and, and then you have to like try different things and see what feels right. And so I tried the, the first approach of really breaking myself down in a sense of like analyzing the walls that I built up and my ego and being aware of all that and, you know, just trying to kind of squash it and, and it serves a purpose, but at the same time, we need a little bit of ego and especially actors because a lot of actors can fall into that trap of, Oh, I'm not a name. Oh, I'm not this. Oh, I'm not in that place. Or, and I, I just, I really do think that's bullshit in a, in a sense, you need your ego to work for you. So there's, there are situations to let it go. But I think with, with our career, I think it's, it's okay. And I think we should have a bit of ego, not in the sense of you're better than other people, but in a sense that you are the shit. Best way I can say it. So yeah. Kind of like pumping yourself up. Like, yeah, because I found that when I completely dropped it, it felt to, um, and everyone's different. If, if you're in a place where at that point, I don't think I was a super spiritual person. I think if you're in a place where you are very spiritual, where you've had a lot of experience with meditation, and at, at that point I hadn't, maybe there's there's a place that you get to that feels comfortable. For me, that didn't feel comfortable because it felt very like, complacent in in a way yeah if if that's the word to describe it so it wasn't it wasn't an an expecting of anything but it was a deserving it was I I love that that's so it's so informative to hear because I think in my own like in my own personal journey like I'm kind of trying to work on my mindset I often can go to the negative as well so I'm definitely, it, I, I love hearing all of this. This is like very helpful. For yeah. Sure. So it's the, I mean, the majority of, well, it's a, it's a thing with all humans called the um, negativity bias. We all go to the negative, just that's how our brains are made up. We're always looking for um, making sure that we're in survival mode. Yeah. So that was another thing. It was like, researching that and understanding all that I needed to understand it I had to understand it I couldn't take somebody's word for it you know you could uh, when I was going through all that I I had everybody stay positive it doesn't do anything to tell somebody to stay positive if you don't understand it if you don't get that there's a reason behind your positivity and that something's going to come from it it, it, you can you could say it till you're blue in the face but it's not going to do anything so the one uh, comment that I get over and over is believe in yourself, which that's, it's very hard to hear because I, I wouldn't obviously be chasing something like this for as long as I have, if I didn't, but it, there is something to an inherent negativity that starts to pile up after constantly being disappointed. Yeah. And that's, I guess what I'm referring to with, with the ego portion of it a little um but it's also goes back to kind of the the manifesting thing where you put yourself in in that position to the point where you feel it and you don't even really care if it comes so it's of course yes of course we believe in ourselves and like you said that's you know why we're doing this at all but it it takes a while to get to but you can get to a place where people don't even, or if somebody says, believe in yourself, it doesn't even do anything to you because you're like, believe I'm already there. Yeah. Uh, like I'm, 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 I'm already there. I, I've already got my Oscar. Like, what are you talking about? And, yeah. And it, it sounds crazy. And maybe I'm crazy. that. <laughs> that I I'm, don't think so. No. I, I look at you as like a magician, like your mindset queen. And so this is exactly what I wanted to talk to you about. It's not crazy because it's obviously been doing wonderful things for you. And I've, I mean, I'm, everyone has their low moments, but I've never heard you like be negative or, you know, 
have a bad attitude about it. Everyone has their moments, but I mean, I always look at you like she has her head in the right place. I try. It's not always <laughs> there. I'll, I'll be honest about that. It's definitely not always there, but it's, it's something that I'm aware of now. So it's something where if I feel it, I can kind of turn it around. I can talk myself out of it. And I also know, I've also stepped back a little from always telling people everything because I realized that I used to do that a lot and I would always end up, and I'm, I'm sure you've actually encountered it before where sometimes it's just like TMI. Like I didn't, you didn't have to go into all that detail. And so I'm like, maybe I should just keep quiet on this. But for the most part, I think being self-aware has has helped me with that a lot. So I've been able to, I've been able, the one thing I think that I'm the most proud of is that I've been able to get out of it quicker because we can't avoid it happening. It's going to happen. That's life. We're going to get those negative moments. We're going to feel like we're never going to book anything again or that that's going to happen, but it's getting out quicker. So yeah. where is that used to keep me down for literally like two weeks? I I, I would just be. I, I didn't want to go anywhere. I didn't want to hang out with anybody. I would get that down on it. And now maybe a day. So that, I think that's the, the most beneficial change that I've had. Yeah. Do you let yourself have that day or are you trying to even narrow that down even more to, to like one hour? Because, because I'm aware of it and because I, I know I, it's almost too aware. I'm like, okay, I know what you're doing right now. I know exactly <laughs> what you're doing. And I usually want junk food. That's usually where I go. And so I have to, you know, remind myself, Tina, remember last time you did this? Remember, you know, this is the consequence of it. And so I've been able to kind of reel it back. But I, I have, I have actually gotten better to a, a couple times where I, I let it, slide right away. I just changed the reality in my head. Like, you know, like I was just saying, I just, I just made it how I, I wanted it to. It's, it's a, it's a weird place. It is. And it's, it's weird to describe to people because they, they really do look at me like I'm crazy a lot, but it really does. Not us. Not us. Yeah. It's, we're right like, there you know, with you. If you're crazy, we're crazy. <laughs> you, because I've been feeling very isolated in my craziness. Although no, not this year actually. We're everyone's going on. So everyone's isolated and crazy. Right, exactly. Everyone is. That's really funny. I uh I find that depending on what else is going on in my life, that affects the amount of time that I stay negative. Right. Yeah. So even some that some roles that I like really, really want and then I don't hear back or I don't get if I have a lot of great things happening. I'll do like, I'm not down to one day, Tina. I'd say maybe two to three. <laughs> That's good. Two to three. It used you, to be, I, that's good. I used to hold grudges for months. <laughs> like I'd be no, upset for months. Two, okay. Well, yeah. I, I say two weeks, but it went longer. <laughs> it definitely did. So now I'm like a good, on a good time, it's like two to three days. But then I notice if it's like longer, if it's like a week or longer, I'm like, oh, it's because this and this is piling on to this. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's so much of the, the energy just around us, period. That, that was another thing that I didn't really come to terms with until probably pretty recently I started to come to terms with the energy thing. I, I always know, obviously, you know, scientifically we're all energy, but I never understood how that plays into like a day to day or, or building relationships with people or, or having things come into your life. I never understood kind of like how to implement that, but it, it really is a thing. If you're, you have negative energy around you, it just affects our bodies and we, you, you almost really can't help it. So that's yeah. it, at the times when I was going through it again, I would have people be like you know why you like this or you've dealt with this so many times don't you know but I could not stop it it just I could not stop it and I feel I I think now looking back that that energy was just surrounding me it was just it was everywhere and yeah it has to do with other things um that are piling up in your life and if that's already affecting affecting your you know your state of being then it just 
exacerbates it. Yeah, because the, the amount of times that it happens to you isn't going to make it less affecting. So you have to change it from yourself. Yeah, that's the thing I found I found really interesting, though, with us actors, because we do. We've dealt with this for so long. And everybody says, you've been doing it for so long now. Like, how, how do you still get? And I'm like, you don't get it. No. You don't get it. It doesn't change. It doesn't change because of the importance we put on work and on the job. And no matter what, that's that's not because we're happiest when we're on set. So we can't really unknow what would what would happen if we book that. Although, in saying that, you actually don't know. There could be a job that you really weren't supposed to book. There could have been a situation that wouldn't have been good for you whatever it is. But the majority of the time, you know, you get this amazing series regular role or lead in a film and you're like, ah, oh, it would, your, your brain can't help but go there. And so it's like, you, you've yeah. held on to that already. And every time it's like, you, you know, it's like you were dropped every time from that. And that's hard. That's hard to deal yeah. with on totally. a day-to-day basis. So yeah. As much as people can say you should be used to it by now, no, try it out <laughs> and see, you know. No. Yeah. <laughs> are you someone that meditates as well or are you into well, that? I've tried. That's another thing that I've tried numerous times and I could not focus. Yeah. I was not feeling the benefit of it. Yeah, I um, I struggle with it too. I've had so many people mention it to me like, oh, you really should meditate, like clear your mind because I have a very busy mind and I'm always like, go, go, go. In fact, when I'm feeling most like when I'm really down, I'll actually just try to distract myself um, with other things instead of kind of sitting in it. And therefore, like, then I never get over it mm-hmm. <laughs> because I'm just distracting myself from the problem. Yeah. Um, so people are like, oh, you really should meditate, but I... I don't, I, I can't do it. It's really hard for me. Yeah, it's, I know it's hard. And I I think especially being an East coaster, um, New York is not as much like that as LA. Everyone's meditating. Everyone's in yoga. I like, I'm really not that, that person. I can't even do yoga to be honest with you. I yoga bored me. I did it and it just bored me. I, I, me too. I, 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 me too. I get like so anxious because I'm so, I'm bored. I couldn't focus. I'm from I'm LA like, and I get bored by yoga. <laughs> I, I'm Pam, like, I think you're a secret East Coast gal. Yeah. Yeah. For real. Totally. Like I, 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 I go kickboxing for my nowhere. meditation. Yeah. No, it's, I yeah. mean, meditation for anybody with, with the way the human brain works it's hard. It's super difficult, but it depends. I found a meditation that works for me. And I'm actually thankful for quarantine because I really wasn't able to implement it on a day-to-day basis until quarantine because I had just zero FOMO during quarantine. I, there was nothing I could do. So my brain wasn't anywhere else because we don't even realize where our brain is. We think we know what we're focusing on or thinking about, and we don't because our subconscious is going to these places that we're not aware of. So it takes like Mm -hmm. a tremendous amount of awareness, which is actually a lot of work and it's a lot of energy. It takes a lot of energy out of me to like constantly be looking at my thoughts, but it's necessary and I'm happier doing it. But my, um, my meditation is, focused I, I I guess in in manifesting as as well not just it's a meditation yes to quiet my mind and shift my energy but I also focus on the reality I'd like to create some meditations are just completely blanking out your mind or, or taking you to a different space I found that that didn't keep my attention Maybe I'm just really selfish and I just want to think about what I want. <laughs> I don't know. But <laughs> I felt worked. the same way. Yeah. It worked for me. I was like, I, I already, I feel energy very heavy, um, which I, I kind of 
came to a realization that I don't know, some people believe in it, some people don't. And I went back and forth with it for a while, but I, I think I'm an empath. I, I wasn't sure if I believed in it for a long time, but I just pick up on energy so hard th- that sometimes like even when, when the riot started happening, I felt so, I felt sick. Like I felt so, yeah. my energy just felt heavy and like very, obviously it was, it was a difficult time. So everybody felt sad and like a bit gloomy, but I literally couldn't get off my couch. I felt physically sick. Yeah. And I would ask other people like, Oh, do you, you know, do you feel like this? Like, and they're like, no. And I'm like, really? And so then I started to look, you know, is it, is it mentally something? And I started to do all my crazy research, but then I, I, I remember hearing about empaths and always thinking maybe I could possibly be one. And so I started to research kind of what other empaths say that they feel. And, um, and I, I think I am. So I think for me, I have to be careful kind of the energy that I'm around and, um, the energy that I take in. And so with meditation, one thing that I've been practicing recently is a meditation where I just focus on nothing. It doesn't feel fantastic, but it does help when my mind won't stop because sometimes it just like, Mm -hmm. it's interesting. I can totally sympathize with that because there are times where, um, now I'm a little bit more aware of it. And I, I too um, try to be careful with my surroundings and who I bring into my life at a close proximity. And because back in the day, someone would ask me like, what was wrong? Clearly I was like upset, but nothing was really wrong with me. I would start just talking and everything that came out of my mouth was about well, this terrible thing happened to this person and this person's feeling okay. sad about this. And like nothing really had anything to do with me. It was all things that I was feeling bad about that were happening to, you know, people that were close to me. Yeah. And it really felt like it was mine. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That, that's, that's exactly it. That's what it feels like. Yeah. It feels like you, you suddenly took it on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, I always thought it was that I'm oversensitive or um, that I overreact to things and it could be that, but it doesn't really feel like that because I also realized that I, I, I pick up on things like lately, maybe it is with, with the meditation I've been doing or the like changing my mindset, but I've been really intuitive like to things that are going to happen and picking up on stuff that, I'm I'm usually like very skeptic and like oh okay that's because of this or that's because you saw that but when they pop up I'm like no way <laughs> like this is not a coincidence this is crazy it'll be so specific to what I was thinking or even dream I had a, a dream the other night that that then like you know popped up the next morning that I, and I, it was just it's too much if you experience it and it's too much of a coincidence you've got to put it to something else. And Mm -hmm. it's the only thing I can, I can think of. I don't really know what else, what else. It's really hard to, to put that together. There are so many things that happen that are inexplicable and it's, it's just hard to like talk about these things sometimes because you're right. People, people do, have certain ideas and people try to look at themselves as realists and this and that, but there are certain things that can't be explained necessarily. Yeah. And I've, I was always kind of like that too, like very skeptical. And I, I wasn't, I wasn't, I guess I I was skeptical in the sense that I would kind of struggle with myself because I wanted to believe in it. I felt like inside I really wanted to believe in it, but I needed proof i needed science i needed something that explained it in like in analytical terms and the point when you can't deny it is when it happens to you when you feel it and people can doubt it if they want but i know what i experienced at that time i know what i saw i know what i you know i i used to pick up on things when i was a kid that's freaky that's weird and then it went away. And I think that was an energy shift. I think that once like 
adolescence and my brain and ego kicked in, it kind of went away. But when I was little, like, yeah, I used to, I used to know weird stuff. I know it's very strange. That's so interesting. And I know. Do you think that has to do with um, the walls that we put up when we, we start to grow? That's why children are such wonderful mm-hmm. actors. I was yep. just about to say that, Pam. That's so funny. Yeah. <laughs> We're on the same brain, like, brain, mm-hmm. brainwave. A hundred percent. I mean, I, I, I know that that's a, a fact definitely with kind of the, you know, supernatural world and seeing spirits and things like that. Kids can usually access that more because they don't have any kind of memories or ego built up to block that out. But I definitely think that that's what happened to me. Um, but it's come and gone. Every once in a while, I'll have some kind of like weird situation that, that pops up that I don't know where it came from. But I just remember when I was little, it was like very easily accessible. Yeah, it was weird. This is so interesting. That's really fascinating. I wonder if you could like hone in on that skill, like if you could find a way to... I, I, I really want to. Yeah. I do and I don't. It scares me a little bit. But I've gone to see, I have gone to psychics throughout my life because that was another thing that I didn't believe in psychics because everybody that I went to, nobody nailed it. Nobody. And people would always come back and, or they would like recommend this person and they'd be like, oh, you got to go, you got to go see her. You know, I, I go to her every month and she's always right. She's always on the ball. And, you know, I'll go to her and like she was off about every single thing or, you know. <laughs> One thing that I that I was like, you know, waiting to happen that she said was, and it didn't, and that my faith just kept going, you know, out the window. So I I didn't believe in like psychics per se, but pretty much every psychic that I had been to, granted they were wrong, but they would always say off the bat, um, you you could um, build on your psychic skills, or I could see that you have some kind of psychic ability. And so that got in my head and it made me think about it a little. And I, I do remember things that I would guess. I, I would just guess these weird, strange things. And I don't know exactly where it came from. But I think that throughout my life, I just so much. Oh, wow. <laughs> I just jumped up on my computer. Um, I think so much stuff comes up that it was just completely blocked my 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 ego blocked it for sure 100 percent. but now i think that i am doing this it's coming back maybe not in the psychic sense but in some kind of sense in some weird sense because really like just very strange um I think it's kind of I the way I look at it, and I could be totally wrong, is that it could almost be built on levels, right? People could have empathy, yeah. and then I feel like almost a little bit the next sort of level up in my eyes is intuition, mm-hmm. and then uh, super heightened intuition is almost like the realm of psychic. Yeah, I wish I. I actually did now that I remember I do have a book I bought it a couple of years ago that's um how to develop your psychic skills because I was interested and then I forgot about it and never read it but I was interested in seeing if it was something and I think now that it is at this point that um new things are coming in that I hadn't felt before that maybe I would look into it more but again I am a little scared I think because of the whole empath thing, I don't really want to, I'm scared to open myself up to energies that maybe I don't want to. Yeah. Yeah. That's so So, fascinating. Yeah. Part of me is a little, um, like maybe not, Tina, like maybe deal with the 50,000 other things you have to deal with before you start trying to be a psychic. Like seriously. (laughs) I love it. So, Alexa, do we think it's time to ask the very important question? I think it is time. Yes. All right. Who wants to go first? Who wants to ask Tina? I'll ask her. Okay. Ready? Tina, are you okay? I'm fantastic. Ooh, we like that answer. 
And I am thinking, I'm like, what's what's the most uplifting answer I can give? I fantastic say it. Is, is up there, isn't it? I think that was our first fantastic. Oh, good. <laughs> You caught you caught me on a good day, actually. So yeah. I am pretty fantastic today. Yeah, you good. are the first fantastic. That makes us happy. Yeah, hey. and I'm glad I got to chat with you guys and do this. This is fun. Yeah, we're so happy. We're so happy you were able to join us. Yeah, of course. I'm happy Alexa, I can see you. I'm happy I can see you. Yeah, no. <laughs> this, is, yeah. this is awesome. So before we wrap up, I'm gonna just. Ask Alexa real quick over here. Are you okay? Okay. Actually, I am. I am. Oh, I'm better than okay. Sorry. I can't just say I'm okay. <laughs> See, she never I'm gets like, it right. Oh. She never gets it right. Wait, was I supposed <laughs> like, to say Are I'm you okay? okay? No. The show is. No. no, Alexa doesn't even know the premise of her own yes, show. <laughs> Pam always asks me if I'm okay. Like, yeah, right, I'm okay. And she's like, no, Alexa, you have to give me not okay. okay. <laughs> but yes, I am better than okay. I'm great. I'm great. Should we just change uh, the show yeah. title to Everyone's Okay except Tina, who's fantastic? Yes. <laughs> yes. Everyone's okay. She's great. So don't <laughs> feel bad for being fantastic. Pam, you better be up there too. You better be at least really good. Yeah. Pam? <laughs> Pam, are you okay? Wait, what? So you said you were great? Good? I'm great. Okay, good. Um, great. I'm fabulous. <gasps> oh, guys, I love it. <laughs> that's so- good. That's a good one. That, that's yeah, really on par good. with mine. I, mm-hmm. I always feel, I think yours is a little better. I think it just, the, the sound of the T and the fantastic with fantastic. the, with the, with the fabulous is, is a little bit more like sensual i'm fabulous i'm fabulous like, it's yeah. very like much with my like blazer off the shoulder vibe that i could do a shoulder roll Ooh, I like, that. Really like, Prada. like I'm fabulous. <laughs> except like i'm wearing like elephant pajama shorts <laughs> that is a whole vibe hey, and and the that's all it's about blazer Just on top to- pajamas on the bottom that's how you do it i wouldn't expect anything less for a podcast no i'm just fantastic i'm fabulous because i'm so i always feel so good after we record and today was just extra special because you were so lovely oh thank you thanks for asking me this is fun yay so tina where um can our followers follow you our listeners follow you and where can they watch you um you mean social media following? yeah uh well on oh, my not like my down the Twitter. street or anything just on your uh, social yeah. <laughs> no 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 but my, my, <laughs> you know my instagram handle it's like the worst um it's uh tt tina which is <laughs> underscore ti underscore ti underscore t-i-n-a underscore or if you look up tina i will probably pop up um and then um on uh oh what's my should i should i list tiktok now oh my god am i gonna oh, be yeah do it do it do yes. it for TikTok. TikTok. okay well tiktok is the same at underscore ti underscore ti underscore t-i-n-a underscore or you guys look up tina kashani <laughs> her tiktok is so much fun please follow her <laughs> it is pretty funny it's pretty funny you you want to laugh and i'm planning to do a really good one so i'll send it to you pam Yay! Awesome. Beautiful. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you guys so much. We loved having you. And I'm going to stop recording it. Thanks so much for listening. Please don't forget to like, share, subscribe, all the things. If for some reason you want to see more of us, you can follow us on Instagram at no one's okay. And a special thanks to Jordan Ross Weinhold, Sean Moore, Jason Crow. Claire Palmer, Jackson Palmer, Tiffany Hamoff, Shane Rings, James Liddell, and our podcast is recorded at Soundwork Studios. We can't wait to meet you!